but not many guys do it or teach it, but this is the secret sauce right here. All right. So I really feel like short game is the biggest, best part of my game, and I sure. I feel like this shot is what makes me consistent because I'm getting consistent contact every okay. time. No wrist hinge in all shoulders. So my weight's forward on my left side. One, two. Oh, it sounded so good. That's why I feel like I chip consistently. Oh, that was it. <laughs> that was nasty right there. <laughs> the title of this video is gonna be something like the short game video every single golfer on earth needs to see. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time and I've been looking for somebody special for it and I found him. This is Barry Henson. How's What's it going? Up, buddy? Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Uh, Barry is a pro on the Asian tour. Uh, he has won on the Asian tour. He has uh, played in a major championship just recently in the US Open, won the Long Beach Open, which is a bigger deal to me than maybe some other people watching, but a very big deal to me. What are the things that you wish people knew about the short game? I, I see mainly people, it's not even like, maybe it's the decision making, but it's just, they're not even off of a fairway lie getting good contact. Yeah. It's fat, it's thin, it's flub, or they're not controlling the trajectory. So if we want more contact control and trajectory control, what are some of the things we need to be aware of short game wise? Yeah, so a lot of amateurs that I see when I play pro-ams or traveling is they want to lift the ball in the air, right? Like you say, you're going to have miss hits. I won't be able to control the spin. won't be able to control the contact. Yeah. Um, and I'm a big proponent on using the leading edge because I feel like if you can use with the yeah. leading edge, which is the front part of the wedge of the club, and hit the ball first, you're going to be more consistent around the greens than if you try to use the bounce. Now, I will say, if you are an amateur golfer and you're going wedge shopping, you want to get the wedge that has the biggest bounce as you can, because yeah. bounce is your friend. It's like a, more of an insurance policy than something to actually run your game off of. Yeah, great, okay. great analogy okay. there. Yeah, so I have 10 degrees of bounce on my wedge, but I have it shaved to where when I open it up, I can- Let's get I can, real close to this bounce, Mike. You know, I can, I got a V grind, which is a specialty grind that Titleist makes. And uh, there is a lot of bounce here, but when I open up the face, I can yeah. basically take off some of that bounce and hit some of the spinner shots that you'll yeah, see. Yeah, because sometimes hit. when you open the face, people will thin it because that leading edge starts climbing up, 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 up. Correct. Yeah, but right. yours is grinded in such a way that you have versatility. And... I have some versatility, yeah. right. Okay, cool. So, you know, the one shot that I'll teach amateurs to hit, and I call it my can't mess up shot. Okay. <laughs> I use different words when I win my pro-ams, but sure. uh, you know, you, you can't mess this up. If you get the ball back, if you get the ball back in your stance and you get your hands forward mm -hmm. and you use more of a putting stroke, with limited hinge, so Jason Day like, right? Yeah. You're gonna be way more consistent around the greens. Mm -hmm. And so like if we hit 10 of those shots, our grouping is gonna be more consistent than if we try to fillet the bounce across it. Yeah, if, yeah, you're gonna be more consistent back here than you are up here. Okay, sure. So this mm -hmm. is low risk, this is high risk. Oh, set up for it, that's really okay. interesting. So you so, are, you are, it's like off your yeah. right pinky. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna play this, you know, I got a 60 degree mm -hmm. right now, but I can play this you know, as far back as I want and get it on the green as quick as possible. Yeah, there's so enough loft on the if, club. If, to... if you really didn't want to mess up, and this is what I try to explain to people, this is just for example, if I do not want to mess up and I want to hit that ball, well, I might as well get it as far back here as possible because I'm going to hit ball first every time, right? If I get it up here, well, I might miss this a couple times. So the further you get it back, the bigger margin of error you have and you use more on the leading edge. Now that's just an example for yep. showing it, but when I hit a standard shot, if I can, if the situation allows me, I want that ball about three club faces off my toe and so, I want it on my back foot. So when I'm hitting a standard pitch that I can get on the green, I always try to get it to run 20, I get, try to land 25 and run 75. That's, all, that's what I try to do on almost every pitch shot. And if I could use the lead, leading edge, yep, I do yeah, with percentage. my hands forward. I got a better, better percentage. So if all options are available to you, you like to carry it one quarter, have it roll three quarters? 100%. Okay, great. 100%. And you do that with your 60? So I, have, I usually chip with three clubs, and those are the only three clubs I chip with. Mm -hmm. And if I have a 48, you know, I could play it back in my stance and I can get it to land right here. Mm -hmm. So I've just developed that skill set by moving my ball position. I'll play, this would be my hands forward shaft lean. This would be my neutral. This would be my shaft lean back. The more I go back here, the higher risk I bring into the play. Yeah. The less risk I have here, and that's right. where I'm better at. So when all options are available to you and there's there, you know, no bunker to go over, no like ridge, 
but, but it's a pretty standard. You're almost always playing this. this I'm always this playing it back with shaft lean forward. Can, yeah. can you hit one like yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. Me? So if I'm going to that stick, I'm going to play, you know, I could play a 50-50 here with the shaft lean back. And I'm going to just really use no wrist hinge in all shoulders. So my weight's forward on my left side. One, two. Oh, it sounded so good. And I'm just getting clean contact yeah, every time. Yeah, lots of good action. Right? I got three club, club links off my right toe. Mm -hmm. I got my weight on my left instep. Left lower body's gonna stay quiet. One, two. So not much of a, a weight shift, really. It feels like not at all. But no, yeah, so yeah. on the way back, I want my lower body to be as quiet as possible. I'll try that and then we'll do a little false yeah. fixes. This is my 60 as well. Okay, Barry, so I'm going one, one two, two, three. three. Yep, looks hands forward, good. weight on that left instep. And when you're saying weight on the left, we're going like 80% or, or? 75. Well, on the instep though, not yeah, on the, okay. Correct, right. right in here is where mm -hmm. I like to keep it. And then action wise, it's just, I feel like the buttons on my shirt are moving in a putting stroke fashion. Yeah, okay. yeah. So this, you're gonna feel like this left shoulder kind of goes up. Nice. Good. And now stay right there. Mm -hmm. This is what I found. This right here, creating this space is why I figured out I'm good. A lot of really? amateurs, when they hit the shot, oh. you see them like this. They're maintaining this little triangle of the whole club, or why? Yeah, so yeah. When, I, when I teach people this way, I'll put a stick here, and I'll have them hit this, and then see how I'm creating this space? Mm -hmm. I'm creating this space here. That's why I feel like I chip consistently. Okay. Because I would say- Most people, they're, they're trying to help they're, it. They're, they're helping this. it, right? Yeah, right? And then they, they'll hit themselves with this, you know, a stick here. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like short game is the biggest, best part of my game. And I sure. I feel like this shot is what makes me consistent because I'm getting consistent contact every yeah. time. Yeah, so let's go back here. Now we got a little longer carry to the green. We're gonna use that first ball as maybe our reference to the pin. So I'm looking at maybe, a, you know, from the distance here, I gotta hit this about. So just, I'm gonna walk and you show me landing points so people can see. Yeah, so I'm looking about 50% onto the green. So that right there, there's a little speck right there. Yeah. Here? I'm kind of a little bit closer here. Right there, there's that little speck yeah. of grass. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where I'm seeing where I want to land this. Right. And then the balls, the pin's right there. Yeah, right here. Right there, yep. Okay. So I got, you know, now I got to create a shot that has a little bit of spin. So now we're talking about one, two, three, and then one, two, three, one. So now we're talking about 75, 25. Yeah, more, or maybe or even, closer. maybe even 50, 50, maybe. Yeah. Oh, because but, of the slope, yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, so. Now I would, you know, pick the club based on, you know, the shirt, the you know, trajectory, um, how much spin I want. I would use a 60 in this reference because I can still create some shaft lean here. But what I'll do is I'll open up the face. So now with your wedges, are you like 80% of the time you're using the 60 and then, and then the remaining 20 is, is split 10, 10 for your other two clubs you chip with, or how is would, it usually split? I would say that's about right. Yeah. yeah. Because the reason why is because I can create a lot of different, a lofts. lot of different shots yeah. by moving it in my stance. Okay. Gotcha. And I've learned that through my short game guy, Ron Nizendo for many years. Now I, I like to use a 54 around the greens as well. Mm -hmm. But I would say the 54 and the 60 are the two ones I use the most, and the 48 would probably be very minimal. Okay. All so, right, so we're, we're hitting this shot that's good, like more of a 50-50 shot. Our first one was a 25-75. Yeah. This is more your 50-50. So I'll show you two different ways I could hit this. Sure. Like, like I said before, I, I've always want to keep that, that shaft lean forward. That's what mm -hmm. I try to do. Now, I can still do that by, op you know, but create the loft by opening up the face. So I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna still play it, maybe kind of neutral, but I want to get that shaft lean forward. And That's ball gonna... position is now, is now instead of off your right pinky toe, it's probably middle right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah I think it's more middle. I'm gonna open up my stance that gives me a little bit more um, control of hitting the inside of the golf ball. It's gonna create a little more spin. So, but I still want to try to keep that shaft lean if I can. Oh, that's cool. And that oh, just, perfect. you know, kind of gets on the green. So like if you're doing, Mike, like if, if you're doing, I'll just throw a number out there, 15 degrees of shaft lean, you're, you don't want to make your swing like four, like 20 degrees, 15, that you're feeling like it's that the whole time. Yeah, that I feel like I maintain that, that shaft lean, that the, whole shaft lean the whole time with no I hinge. Like and, and I just, my shoulders kind of do all the work. Mm -hmm. I feel this palm is my piston. 
and then this is my engine when I chip. Okay, gotcha. And it just doesn't break down. You watch Jason Day, it's very similar. Parker McLaughlin also teaches this type of technique. Yeah, yeah, we did videos with Parker. And then what, what's the second way that you might hit this shot? So if I had a firmer green mm -hmm. and I needed a little more height, mm -hmm. now I'm gonna get the shaft lane more neutral. Yeah. But I can still keep that, but that's a little higher risk. Yeah. So, so now instead of whatever that was before, we're yeah. making this I'm making a little basically more. vertical. Which, which makes a little more risk in the shot. I feel the more I get back this way, the higher risk I have. The more I get that way, just that shaft lean gives me a little more margin to error. So you kind of look at it like Matt Kuchar, I saw describe this this week, you're kind of like on a, on, a, on a rug, right? Yeah. The more you can keep this on the ground, mm -hmm. the more successful you're gonna have. So when you get that shaft lean forward, it likes to stay on the ground more. The more you get here, the more vertical you get, and you get more of this move. Yeah. Especially when you get more forward, then you're getting more of that move, right? right. So I wanna keep it shaft lean if I can, but if I need more height, I know I can get back here I just gotta make sure my lower body stays quiet so it gives me a little more room for error on the strike. That just gets it a little bit higher. So the only longer. difference the difference between those two is now you need to stop it quicker so you, you lessen the shaft lean, but now you're gonna have to make the speed of the whole thing go. You have to increase the speed a little bit more, mm -hmm. which makes the margin of error a little bit deep, a little bit bigger. All right, speaking of margin margin for error. Now, if we're going for that ball close and we really have to stop it, so this yeah. would be more the the total, okay, total flop or the you know butterfly with sore wings kind of thing. Well, see, I got I got the shot for you. It's called the weak left hand. If you okay. follow me on Instagram, this this okay. this shot Ron Dezino created. Um, I actually asked a few guys if they'd do it. Not many guys do it or teach it, but this is the secret sauce right here. All right. So you're gonna take this this left hand mm -hmm. and you're gonna make it as weak as possible. Weak. That, so by so this is this strong yeah. and this is weak, right? Uh -huh. So I'm gonna get on here, I'm gonna open the face up as much as possible and I'm gonna weaken that left hand as much as I can. Now by doing that So show me normal and show me weak. So this would be normal. Uh huh. This is gonna be weak. Oh yeah. So now okay. instead of like people always talk about knuckles, I normally see two and a half knuckles. Now you're gonna weaken it so that you see like not even one. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I go as weak as I can. Yeah. Now what this does is to get the distance, you have to create more speed. And when we get more speed, we get more spin. So I was working on the shot earlier today and, and I try to hit it around the fourth or fifth groove. So I want the fourth or fifth groove with the top being on the seventh groove. And that's gonna create six spin. It's saucy. This is a... So this is the Hensonator saw shot. Okay. So with this green being pretty soft, and I got you know a decent turf here. I should be able to just get this to just, just super soft. You might even see a little backspin. Here. Open face, weak grip, yep. speed. Weak grip. Really good. So you can hear it, <laughs> yeah. right? You yeah. can hear that thing. It stopped within a foot. <laughs> All right. Well, it doesn't mean anything. You can do it. You're a pro. I got. I, we have to see if I can do it. There's all kinds of things you can do. Okay. All right, so, so I was a good student, so I'm, I'm very weak there. Yeah, you want to weaken that as much as you can, mm -hmm. like just extremely weak. It's going to feel weird at first. You're going to open that face. Yep, good. Maintain that angle like you did. You did, you did that really well. Nice. Oh, that's what I thought it would do. <laughs> we need some more practice on that it one. Does, uh, it, does, it does make it high risk. Let me grab some more ball. <laughs> yes. So, so using that, the that, bounce. That obviously looked nothing like my practice swing. No. Because the practice swing, I was interacting with the ground. I it was, was good. I'll do one more so you can kind of yes, see it. Yes, please. The key in this is also really finding your bottom, okay? Mm -hmm. You see how I found that bottom there? Boom. Now all I have to do is move into that, okay? Found my bottom, move into it, boom. It's tons okay. of spin. Oh yeah, and you really didn't like take that big of a swing either. No. So look, your bottom's there, right? So your bottom's there. Okay. So you gotta keep, you gotta try to get your bottom more here and then you can walk into the ball. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There you go. I like it. Now you're good. Yeah, yeah. I was still, I Your was, bottom was too far back. Yeah, I was building in this and the open face and then also trying to fillet into it. Yeah, you don't but want to fillet. But if you have this built in with the open face, you don't have to do that. Then you keep the shaft clean. Oh, you keep the shaft clean and, and go through And create that space it. that I was talking about. 
That looked better. Yeah, it was better. You're almost gonna hit like a mini draw. Oh, okay. You don't gotcha. want to go across it. Yeah, I was surprised when I saw you set up to this. Usually, you know, with a flopper, people at the face open the feet this way, and you're pretty square. Just slightly open. And I try to hit the inside of the ball. There you go. That's it. Boom. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah, there we go. Good. Nice. Cool. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So, those are the three shots you need to have we have our 75, 25, our 50, 50, and our stopper, the Hensonator special, the super spinner. One thing I want you guys to do, it'll take you just two seconds to do, but it'll really be important for the channel and for Barry. Go over to Instagram and follow Barry Henson. Those two words, I'll put it in the description in there and follow Barry, really great follow there. And also hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button is really the thing that keeps the channel alive. Thanks for watching, bye. Cool. Good stuff, buddy. Great.